playing online and on smart devices. Now on London Scotty Radio, it's podcast time. I'm George Matlock. Welcome to London Scotty Radio and this, the second episode of Scotty MOT. Here we talk about all manner of Scotty health issues to ensure yours remains tip-top. Our guest today comes from the Scottish Terrier Rehoming Charity, Scottish Terrier Emergency Care Scheme, which London Scotty Club is partners with. So please send a hi and huge aru to Stex Welfare Officer Kath Marshbank. Welcome to the show. And a bit breathless, but how was your day? Oh, hectic as usual, but uh, but good. We, we're here on, on your radio. It's uh, a real privilege to be asked to, to speak. It's great to have you as well here with us today. Now, um, you've had a busy day. T- tell us a little bit about what uh, what you've been up to. Uh, well, today I've got a, quite a few dogs in. Um, it's been swings and roundabouts. We've been very, very quiet, more or less through COVID. And then it's like buses. All the dogs come in at once. Uh, we ended up with two pairs. Um, coming in to, to find new homes. Uh, on top of that, I also do some dog sitting, and I've had five dogs in on holiday as well. So, five dogs? Wow. Yep. Yeah, so in total, for a couple of days last week, I had 15 dogs to look after. So back back to the heyday, <laughs> lots of dogs around. Wow, 15 dogs. Who's counting? My goodness. Okay, is that an average sort of day for you? Um, yeah, it's, it's a case of get up, um, get the dogs out, let them out for a tinkle, and then start in the feed regime. Uh, some dogs have to have medication, um, you know, two feeds a day. Um, you know, luckily at the moment, most of the dogs I've got in are all getting on with one another, so I don't have to do many separate um, let outs. Uh, a couple of days last week, I had a couple of dogs which just weren't seen eye to eye, and it was, um, you know, Channeling one lot of dogs into one area, let the other dogs out, you know, baby gates up and making sure mm. nobody could meet and no fights on, on hand. So, But we got through that few days and the dogs uh, went back to their owners happy. Wow, so you've got so all kinds of partitions and um, gateways and, and all the rest of it. So how does it feel like to live it in strange ways? Um, <laughs> <laughs> strange ways, yes, it's, it, it can be like that sometimes. I'm quite lucky with my Scotties are so good at letting other dogs into the house, not getting jealous. Mm. And I'm also very lucky that I've got five acres of land where the dogs can roam free and not get out of that land. So it's um, it makes life a little bit easier. But, you know, if there's a toy what's been left out and some, you know, one dog wants that toy and the other dog, how dare you take my toy? Mm. You know, you've just got to be on the ball <laughs> and make sure nobody can... Uh, <laughs> cause any any fights or anything but um you know on the whole most of the dogs do get on right and, good you know, which is good good so you can actually make a cup of tea in between you don't have oh, to be constantly definitely. on 24 7 brilliant so tell us a little bit about Stex for those who are uninitiated uh listening perhaps to this podcast for the first time the, the charity i know it's been around since the mid 1970s and you've been involved with it i think from the beginning have you have you not um not right from the beginning um I've definitely been involved for the last 20 years, Mm. um, and I took on welfare officer probably, I think it's about 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, I lose track of time, Um, but I got heavily involved with Stex when we moved to the property where I am, um, because it meant I had the space to be able to take dogs in, and, you know, we don't have any neighbours, which is, well, any immediate neighbours, which is nice. You know, if the dogs do want to have a bark and a run round, we're not disturbing too many people. Um, so Stex was formed uh, as an, emer- an emergency care scheme to help people with the Scottish Terriers. So it wasn't necessarily about rehoming the dogs. It was about being able to give emergency care. So if somebody fell on hard times, couldn't afford an operation for the dog, Dex had the money there to be able to help pay towards the operations. And, you know, the charity has grown from there. We've become more of a rehoming charity. You know, we are really the number one for the Scottish Terrier breed as a breed rescue. We're heavily involved with the Kennel Club. 
and you know most people you know if they want help with the Scottish they pick up the phone and speak to us which is great fantastic so in a way um you, it's, it's fascinating to hear this that your your role has kind of uh, transformed i guess really with the introduction of pet insurance in the uk so as as more people have got pet insurance so i guess your responsibilities have changed from uh, caring for the dog so much as as to then uh, uh, helping rehome them if, if necessary yeah we, we still there we do give emergency care um a couple of years ago um there was a chap walking in the park and he saw a lady with the scotty and he went running over and said oh you know can i see a scotty mine died a few months ago and i really miss the scotty and the lady said, well, here, have this one. And he said, pardon, you know, what do you mean about <laughs> taking your Scotty on? And he said, I'm really struggling to pay the vet fees. Wow. The dogs are diabetic and, um, you know, I can't afford to pay the fees. So he suggested that she contacted us at Stex, which she did do. We had a chat and we agreed that it was best that she keep hold of the dog because, you know, she knew him. He, he was getting on a little bit. I think he was about 11 and a half at this point. And we paid towards um, all his insulin. She ha- she paid some of the bill. We didn't pay it all out right, um, you know. But uh, we were able to keep the dog in the home and keep him going. He has since passed away. You know, it meant that she could keep hold of the dog without her having without having to rehome him. That's fantastic. And indeed, it's it's what every owner would love uh, is to to know that they they don't have to part ways in that in those sort of circumstances that they can stay with their dogs. So that's Stex. We'll obviously come back to the topic of Stex and what's uh, new at at, uh, at uh, your charity in subsequent editions. But let's now turn to the topic of the day. Now, this weekend you will be at Discover Dogs in London's Excel Centre. It's a chance for the unsuspecting public to get close to canines of many varieties and perhaps choose a Scotty rescue from Stex. But Scotties aren't for everyone. Tell us about the behavioural traits of Scotties. Well, definitely not for everybody. Unfortunately, we do get a lot of dogs that come in where people have been out and bought a puppy, um, had the puppy home for, you know, 12, just over 12 months mark, and then it's like, help, we can't control the dog. Um, you know, please help us find a new home. Um, and it's generally with the Scotties, as they get to that age, um, you know, especially the male Scotty testosterone's um, ripping through the body and, you know, the dog's full of hormones. And what they want to do most of all is protect the owner. So as, if you're out on a walk with your Scotty, a lot of people know through having the dog, they see a big dog that's coming towards them and the dog wants to attack. It sounds like the dog wants to kill another dog. And a lot of that aggression is built up at trying to protect the owner, but also they're terrified of that big dog that's coming past. So you've got a mixture of aggression. You've got fear aggression, uh, you know, mixed in. And it is something that if you work on with your dog, you can get over it. You know, I've had dogs that have come in to rescue which have never been socialised. You know, the people have just said, you know, I'm not going to take the dog a walk anymore. We're happy just leaving him in the garden. He can run around as much as he wants in the garden. And then eventually they come around to the thinking, well, it's not a life for the dog. Our life's moved on. Let's rehome him. And so, you know, we bring the dog in and then we take him for a walk in the park and it's, oh, my word. You know, when Mm -hmm. a Scotty barks, it really does sound like a Rottweiler, (laughs) you know, in a small dog's body. It's true. It is so true. I once had a builder in and um, he hadn't seen the dog, but he he said... um, can you make sure that, that that bloodhound is under control? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Only, and then he felt rather silly when he was introduced to this much smaller uh, terrier. But there you go. Um, right, well, indeed, uh, it does sound very much like the, the Scottish terriers that we all know, many of us who, are, of course, are owners of them ourselves. You mentioned there about the, the sort of instinct to want to attack um, an, another dog and, and, and in, a, in, a, in very much a protective way as well. I think a lot of people don't know that actually uh, Scottish Terriers have rather ba- large teeth, don't they? They certainly do. They've got the biggest teeth of all um, dogs. The, the, the canine is much bigger than a German Shepherd. That's what I find remarkable. I know you've told me that before and I've yeah. never forgotten it, but I was yeah. like... I want us to say it again because I, I need a reality check here. I cannot believe that the that a canines of a Scottish Terrier would be bigger than, than those of an Alsatian, of a German yeah. Shepherd. Yeah, you know, a lot of the Scotties, if you actually, you know, move the beard because the beard hides everything, lift the lip up and you actually look at the size of the teeth. Mm. 
So, you know, for a lot of Scotties, they'll make the noise, they'll do the barking, but you don't always see the teeth. So, you know, have a good look inside your Scotty's mouth. Not all of them have the giant teeth. You know, you have some mm. dogs which do have a lot smaller tooth, but still doesn't mean it's not going to bite, you know, and, yeah. and hurt when it bites. Yeah. But, you know, if people see that huge jawline, it is terrifying. And, you know, mm. people say, keep that dog away, it's a devil dog. Um, you know, keep it away from me. Yeah. And if you're walking a dog which has got that mentality to want to go and attack another dog, then it is a very hard thing to, you've got to calm yourself down and think, right, you know, I know you're going to bark at this big dog that's coming towards us, but I'm not going to allow you. And the key thing is, is I've got to train the owner rather than the dog. Because once mm. the dog understands that as, as an handler, as an owner, if you're in charge of the dog and the dog feels safe, it's a lot less likely to want to attack another dog. So it's a lot of it is all about how you actually hold the lead when you're on a walk. Okay, right. Well, that sounds very interesting. I mean, also, I think it's correct to say that they have a lock jaw, do they not, Scotties? No. Um, is that not the case? No, not all Scotties have a lock jaw. An odd one will. Um, okay. With the Scotties, what they tend to do is a big bite, a big puncture wound. Mm. And then, then a release. Your breeds of like your Staffordshire Bull Terriers, mm. they tend to have the lock on situation. Yep. And if you're ever involved with a dog that is biting uh, or attacking another dog or even a person and it has locked on, then the key thing to do is to stay calm. Mm -hmm. um, the dog or the person, you know, whatever the dog's got in its mouth, actually hold that into the dog's mouth but you know keeping the attacking dog still so pin that dog down to the floor down to the ground and then try to let the dog relax because the the quicker it relaxes the quicker it will actually release that locked jaw right and once it releases then take the you know whatever it's got in its mouth out because if you pull or the you know the animal is pulling away that's when you get all the tear wounds and you know that's mm. when the you know, it actually makes a mess. Mm. Grizzly stuff. Good to know, though, that most Scotties don't have a locked jaw, but as you say, occasionally they can. So I think it would be great to hear from listeners if they have questions particularly around sort of aggressive behaviour uh, or in or a sort of incessant barking by their Scotty as to how we go about, you know, training the owner uh, more I dare say, more than the actual dog. Perhaps this is a topic for another day and we, we very much welcome people to send in their questions. Um, so if you have questions for Kath, be sure to visit londonscotty.club, our website, and send your questions using our contacts page. Kath will be back in, a, in about... Ooh, and her friends will be back in about a month's time to answer your questions. Kath Marshbank, thank you very much for being a great sport on Scotty MOT and see you in a month. Yes, look forward to it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to London Scotty Radio. This and all our podcasts are available online at londonscotty.club. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe to us from your favourite podcast player app. Also visit us on YouTube for fun videos. And if you have a Scottish Terrier in London or nearby, be sure to join us.